I, so I'm coming at this from sort of a forensic archaeological perspective, um, from the geophysics point of view. Um, and I'm sort of just coming into the automation section of my PhD at Bournemouth. So I'll be giving sort of a few initial results, initial problems, and we'll go into a bit of a discussion. Um, so today I'll give you a bit of introduction to the project itself, a bit of background on uh, GPR, ground penetrating radar, and how the data looks. Um, and then the sort of the two aspects of my PhD, which is creating sort of a decision-making tool for determining the appropriate survey parameters in ground penetrating radar surveys, um, and then the automatic classification of these grave-like features in GPR data. A um, few case studies of my sort of initial uh, real-world test surveys, um, results from that, and then where we need to go from here. Um, so at the minute, in sort of commercial geophysics, we have the problem of we're not necessarily detecting or interpreting graves in survey data, and then archaeologists, excavators go out, and then they find a load of graves that geophysicists didn't tell them about. So the whole, the whole goal of this is to reduce sort of the impact, the commercial impact, as well as the impact on the remains themselves. Um, and to do that, I was trying to implement sort of this interactive decision-making tool. So we make sure that sort of commercial geophysicists are using the appropriate parameters, especially because GPR is sort of the, one of the lesser known techniques. So it's easy enough to go out and survey, but we just want to make sure everyone's sort of using standardized parameters that'll work well for the targets they need to detect. Um, and then from that, we'll go into sort of the automatic classification of the data that we acquire. Um, bit of background on GPR. Um, it's electromagnetic technique, but what's really great about it is it approximates depth for you based on the relative soil velocity. Um, so you're getting a 3D block of data which is really great. Um, so it's continuous uh, data from the ground surface to the end of wherever you set your, basically your measuring window, if you want, if you will. Um, but it's really high resolution, great sampling interval potential. Um, and it works well on low co conductivity soils. Hence why I am working primarily in Ireland on sort of medieval grave sites, because um, Ireland is about 80% limestone geologies, which is really low conductivity. Um, and this is sort of what you can get your radar data to look like. So you have your time slices, you have your 3D blocks, your animations, um, your ISO surfaces, and your radargrams. So at the minute, um, my automation is focusing still on the 2D data, sort of like uh, remote sensing data. But I'm hoping to move into <coughs> full 3D blocks um, and ISO surfaces as well. Now, for survey guidelines, um, I do have to admit that my project's mostly focused on Ireland and the UK, um, that, because that's just where I'm based. So in the UK, we have uh, geophysical survey guidelines. Um, it's massive, it's not massive, it's about 60 pages worth. Um, which Historic England have written to tell commercial geophysicists what the bare minimum techniques they need to do, bare minimum survey parameters, sampling and roll traverse interval, things like that are. Um, and we have the same thing for the European guidelines, um, and we have something similar for Ireland on national road schemes. What I'm trying to do is sort of make it a bit more accessible um, and create sort of a clickable interactive decision-making tool so we can encourage everyone to use the standardized parameters, if you will. Um, and so at the minute, this is sort of the workflow we're going with. Um, you'll, you'll notice that the, the top line and the bottom line are exactly the same. The only difference is um, I've separated it off into country because obviously the geologies and soils and things like that are different for each region. So we have Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, and then Great Britain, England, Scotland, Wales, that. Um, so you, you basically, uh, your geology, your soil, your land use are all linked to the national database, the national record of categorical terms, if you will. Um, and so you basically go in, select your geology for the region, select your soil type, land use. Um, whether or not you have any legacy data, so if you have LIDAR for the area, 
which you won't in Ireland, um, if you have LIDAR for the area or any other previous geophysical surveys. Um, and then you select your target type. Now, at the minute, it's mostly for graves, but I've tried to break it down into grave type. So if you happen to know you're going to a medieval monastic site, then you would expect your stone kists and your simple earthen graves. Um, and then an approximate target depth. And then that will output to a, a range of sort of frequency in the, of the antenna, your sampling interval, your traverse interval, things like that. At the minute, it's still in this sort of flow, flow chart format, um, but I'm working on actually getting it on a, like a clickable map, basically. So you select your coordinates and it will automatically populate uh, your soil, your geology, and everything like that. Um, but the data from this will feed into my automation workflow. Um, so at the minute, I'm using TensorFlow, which is Google's sort of convolutional neural network API. Um, but I'm looking at sort of the amplitude of the reflections from grave-like features, the conductivity, and the morphology of the grave responses themselves. Um, and all of my training data is based on previously collected GPR data um, and some additional techniques. But all that is cor corresponds with excavation data, so I know I'm only using true positive responses in my training data set. Um, and then I'm basically going in and annotating features myself, corresponding the excavation plans with the geophysical survey um, to create the training data set. Um, and then we're going through Inception 3 and Inception 2 at the minute with TensorFlow um, using sort of the two-dimensional data and just retraining that final layer of the TensorFlow architecture. Um, validating the model on sort of a section of my training data set, but also on sort of real world surveys, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, and basically the way TensorFlow works is they're both convolutional neural networks, um, but ResNet version two has a residual layer in it. Um, and it has a load more layers than version three. So the accuracy could potentially be better, but obviously that all depends on the amount of training data I have. So what sort of data am I looking at? We have our, we have our raw data. Nothing's been done to this. Um, so you have your 2D uh, time slices of radar data. We have our process data, so migrated data, take out as much noise as possible, um, also 2D format. And then I have my sort of interpret, my annotations. So all this is done in CAD but I export um, a CSV uh, for a feature annotation map which corresponds to the 2D time slices. Um, and a bit of case studies. So as, as some of you might know, radar data is quite difficult to interpret. This is sort of the reason we need an automatic classification tool for this. Um, I work mostly in Ireland. It's um, because there's a load of medieval sites, uh, great geology, as I said. Um, so at the minute, I've collected real-world data, my own testing data, from seven sites. Oh, I did not, I did not do that. Uh, from seven sites. Um, for time, I'm only going to talk about one of them today and the, <laughs> the implications of the data we collect here and how that will fit into sort of the automat automa automatic classification. Um, so this site is a bivalent ring fort in the middle of Ireland um, with continuous activity from... <laughs> Your computer's having a bit of an issue. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, continuous activity from the second century onwards. Um, but it has the battle, its origins are in this battle basically between the north half and the south half of Ireland. Um, so we know there's meant to be graves. Maybe try okay. that first. Okay, yeah. So, no, no, that's why. Got it. Um, so we know there's meant to be graves. Um, so basically, I've gone out, I've surveyed. I'd like, I'd like to show you some topographic data or some LIDAR data, but they haven't quite gotten that far in Ireland. Um, so all I can show you is 
this image that you can't really see. But trust me, there, um, there's sort of a, a feature in the landscape. It's a raise and elevate, rise and elevation. Um, and if we look at, there we go, if we look at our sort of radar plot of that, you'll start to see a circular structure come out. Maybe this will work. Yeah, you'll start to see the circular structure come out. Um, and at the minute, like to be honest, that's all myself and my colleagues are picking out in this radar data. Um, and this sort of just further proves the need for automatic classification. We know there should be graves there. There are likely to be graves there. Um, but the human eye is only picking, gets, tends to get drawn to those large features. Um, so the aim of this is to sort of Im improve the way in which we can out output, you know, sort of a full scale interpretation, not just the large features, not just sort of the interesting ones, but we want to be able to output everything in the data set of archaeological potential. Um, so, working in TensorFlow, this is the output you get with your basic um, ResNet and um, TensorFlow Inception 3. Um, what I'm trying to do is build on that um, using Keras and do some sort of semantic segmentation. Um, so, I mean, this is similar to what you would get in SegNet. Um, but it just makes it a bit easier to uh, build your classes. The problem with that is we don't have enough training data set. So if anyone has any radar data with graves in it, I would be happy to talk to you. Um, and, and where do we go from here? A bit of discussion on sort of what needs to be done to implement this into the field. Um, obviously, increase the training data set. I only have about 250 images right now. They're all 2D. We're working on three-dimensional um, sort of conver converting. Instead of using RGB scale, you're using a depth scale. Um, but also to make this more applicable in the real world and the commercial aspect, it needs a user interface implemented because um, there's a lot of commercial archaeologists that don't know how to write code. Um, but I think the most important thing is to get an output <coughs> to a georeference image or a georeference illustration that you can just input into your report. Um, and then about eight months time, once I get this you know, quite together, because I'm only in sort of the, the beginning stages of this, I'm going to be sending it out to beta testing um, to commercial companies. There we go. Just <laughs> um, and then once we sort of get that working um, and we work out all our flaws with the commercial aspect, um, I'll be trying to apply it to more international data sets and especially to forensic investigations. Um, but thanks to the sponsors and, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you.